Welcome to another episode of the 10 Minute Land Surveyor. I'm Dave Woolley. Today I'm going to be talking about chaining and the history of chaining as it relates to land surveying. I spent a good portion of my career chaining. Uh, when I say a good portion, it was something we did every day. Uh, however, we didn't really use a chain. We used a, a steel tape, but we referred to it as a chain. When they talk about a chain, they're talking about a Gunter's chain, 66 feet in length. And you'll see here on a, a Gunter's chain is 66 feet and it's 66 feet for a reason. 10 chains, 660 feet. 20 chains, 1320. 80 chains, 5280, one mile. When they were breaking down sections, it was a division of 66, 66 foot chain with 100 lengths. And so how did, how did they keep track of what they were doing? Uh, I'll show you something here on the screen. Here you see a Gunter's chain. And each one of those claws that you see on there, those are for measuring 10 lengths. And so if you had a, a, a one, usually it was a diamond shaped, you were 10 lengths uh, into your chain. Two, three, so on and so forth. Each end of, of the link would tell you where you were because you weren't going to count these links. They went in increments of 10. And you can see there on the right, the diamond shaped one, two, three, four, and then the, a five was a, a solid. And I happen to have a Gunter's chain and I'll show you that here now. Here you go. And on this chain, to give you a sense of the mechanics of it, this is how the links were put together. Is, is you can see these links uh, as, they, as they sit there. It gives you an idea of what it is. And they're just still rods with links, and these were uh, to, to fold and unfold. And then to give you a sense of the brass, this is a, a one, uh, the other one, this is a three, and this is a four. And that gives you a sense of, of what, what these look like. Now imagine measuring a mile 66 feet at a time. Well, you don't have to imagine it. Most of the Western United States was measured precisely this way. Uh, chaining was the, the, the met means of determining distance. And these chains were used throughout uh, the West in, in the sectional public land system, sectional breakdowns. I never had an occasion to use one of these chains. A good friend of mine, Adrian, found this chain in an uh, uh, antique store recently and knew I'd want it. Picked it up. Thanks, Adrian. As I stated earlier, I spent a good portion of my career chaining, and it was something we did every day. When you, when you were to get out of the, the surveying vehicle, you would put your gear on right away, which was a belt, and you would grab the chain, and you would uh, tuck it handle down in the small of your back. And to get out of the truck and start walking without a chain was a major problem. Uh, in those days, the, we usually ran with three people on a crew, and the positions were actually, uh, it really wasn't a party chief, an instrument man, and a chainman. It was uh, a party chief and two chainmen, and they, they called them a head chainman and a rear chainman. And the difference was that the head chainman uh, had more experience usually. And so when we would measure with a steel tape, like I say, you got out of the vehicle, you had it with you, but you also required a number of other tools. I'll show you a couple of these tools. This was a chaining clamp, and on the left there, you can see that the uh, it, it had it, the 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 part that clamps the chain wasn't perfectly round. So as you squeezed it down, the oblong would pinch the chain, and you held them uh, similar to like a pair of scissors, uh, two fingers, and those chaining clamps were. Uh, not used that often. We had them, but we didn't use them because there's usually a leather strap that you can see on, on a chain like this, and you would wrap that around your hand and you would pull it tight. Uh, you didn't use the chaining clamps too often, but we had them. Another tool that was available for chaining was a tension handle. And what you see there is a, a clamp, a hook on the end. And what that would do is each chain has a, an eyelet at the end of it or steel tape has an eyelet at the end of it and you would hook that on and then you would pull the handle and that, that had a spring in it and you can see the graduation on the tension handle and you would pull that spring back and you'd, you'd if I remember correctly, we'd try to get about 20 pounds. Now, we only used the tension handle when we really wanted to be precise because we chained so much, we had a good feel for the, 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 the amount of tension we needed to reduce the sag.
because you got to remember as this thing suspends, the chain would sag. And so you'd put a certain amount of tension on it to take the, the, the sag out. Now, the other tools that we used were, was a hand level because not all the ground was flat. As a matter of fact, most of the time when we were chaining, it wasn't flat unless we were inside of an interior of a building. So you would use a hand level. And I still have my original hand level from 1987. It was uh, part and parcel to uh, what we did. And this hand level uh, looks like this. You, this would pull out and you would put it up to your eye like this and it has a vial on the top and it has a mirror and so when you look through the end of this you see half of this the uh, uh, you see downfield with half of the scope and then you see your level vial in the other half of the scope and so you would look through this and try to get level so uh, I, if I was seeing somebody's waist and from from where I was that meant that I had to be about chest high on the chain to be level with their waist. So they drop down to the knee, I would drop down to the waist and we would suspend the, the, the tape. Now you would get it within reason. Uh, it didn't have to be you know within a tenth or anything like that. You would get it reasonable to level and you would you usually had three measuring positions. Well you had flat, then knee high was the preferred. If you could be knee high, because that gave you a good support and you could, you could square your feet up and use your arm and brace it against your knee, then you had waist and then you had chest. You didn't chain any higher than your chest. And the, how the process would work or what we would do is you would put your elbow always close to your body and use your body as an anchor and you would hold that chain and you would lean into it similar to this and you'd have a plumb bob uh, hanging from it and you would use your body to get the tension out of that and so you would oh but you had to be reasonably close to level so we'd use a hand level this is actually the oldest piece of original equipment that I've, I have in in my gear belt next in the gear that we would use would be a plumb bob you see the plumb bob there on the screen now this plumb bob uh, was a, a something you used every day and in the center photo, what you see there is they didn't have gammon reels initially. And when I, early in my career, we would have some old plumb bobs laying around with no gammon reels and string. Can you imagine? You would have to wrap the string around it. Of course, today we have gammon reels. And we used to sit around and speculate about these gammon reels. We'd say, boy, what a handy thing. That guy must be rich. You know, we didn't realize that there's only a handful of surveyors using these in the entire nation because there's not that many surveyors. But, but it was a lot a topic of a lot of discussion how this guy must have been a genius and uh, got rich selling gammon reels. The last piece of equipment is a right angle prism. And you'll see the hook here and how that would work is we would hook this onto our plumb bob. We would get over a point. Now how, how the right angle prism works is as you look through and on the top you can see downfield and when you look through the lower you can see perpendicular right and left. So if you were chaining over a point and you needed a 90 degree, you would look down your line, maybe at a lath or something that you knew was online, and you would move up and down the line to get 90 degrees to something. Or in the alternative is you would look down the line and you would put somebody online and they would stand over there with a, with a, a, a gammon reel like this facing towards you on their plumb bob and you would put them at 90 degrees. And these were just essential tools that, that, that we used almost every day. The one that we didn't use all the time was the uh, right angle prism. Uh, that was more for uh, doing topo. Well, how we used to do it in, the, in those days, topo, and is, is you would chain down the street setting concrete nails accurately every 100 feet and then you would get out what we call a rag tape or a cloth tape like this and you would chain in between there. And the reason that you'd use a rag tape or cloth tape was is it didn't have to be that precise to be on station. And we'd put a, a paint dot or a keel mark every 25 or 50 feet, but we didn't want to have errors every 100 feet in the course of our work. And so those nails were to keep good accurate distances, those concrete nails. And you would have somebody behind the instrument putting you online, and then you would chain down uh, putting a concrete nail online at an accurate distance at 100 feet if you could get 100 feet. Let's talk about the steel tape. Steel tape is 100 feet long, and it's, uh, 
has a, a increments of tenths of a foot, but they're not all the same. Uh, I'm aware of three different styles of tapes, actually four uh, engineered tapes, they used to call them. And they're 100 feet divided into uh, hundreds of a foot, but they had a steel tape that was uh, incremented on the, throughout the length of the tape. So you could read a 9999 and it was shown on the tape. And then you had an ad chain and an ad, we, ad chain, you had one foot increments after one foot, two foot, three foot, but there were no markings in between the even feet. On the chain side of it, there was a graduated foot. And so what you would do is you would chain out to an even foot on the other, on one end of the chain, on the, on the handle end of the chain, you had a graduated foot. So what would happen is, is the person, you would be yelling down line, you say, take a foot, take a foot, give me a foot, give me a foot. And he would have to, or she would have to get to the even foot. And then it would be the person with the handle end that would move their plumb bob up and down the graduated line to get the hundreds. And so it was a two person operation. So you would yell, uh, 15 and the other person would say 42, 15, 42. And it took both people calling out the distances. That was the process at the time. And if you're really wanting to be precise or if you were going multiple chains because you didn't want to have an error that you couldn't find, what you would do is the person would call out the 15 or not. And you would remember the, the, the chain, the uh, increment that you measured with your plumb bob, you would switch ends and then you would compare notes. So you, the guy would say, I had a 15 and you say, I had a 42. And the guy would say, well, I, I had a 43. And so you say, okay, 42. And you'd write that down and then you would move ahead and you'd move ahead. And that, that was an ad chain. And I learned on an ad chain, I didn't actually know that they had chains tapes that were graduated to the hundredth all the way through. I thought that was the best thing since sliced bread when I found it. But I, I had only known an ad chain in my career. And I, I have an ad chain here to show you. If you look at the screen, you will see that, uh, see how this has a one foot increment here? There's nothing graduated in between. And then down at this end of the tape, you have, you have down at this end of the tape, you have it graduated. And so you would always be yelling, you know, take a foot, take a foot. And it was kind of a stressful thing because you wanted to get your distances measured. You wanted to be uh, efficient at it. And so you're doing this all day long. So add a foot, take a foot. And, and it was a, a little bit of a stressful process sometimes depending on who you're working with. So the next tape that I'm going to show you is, is the steel tape, 100 footer. And what you have here is this one's graduated from a, about an inch in from the end of the tape. And this is, this is the worst type of tape because this part of it here had a leather strap to it and it would, you would brace it up against your knee and you couldn't get your plumb bob there. So you would always have to go to the one foot mark. And so you would, you would always yell, cut a foot, cut a foot because you were cutting a foot from this end and you actually chain from this one foot mark here, show, shown here. And that's where your plumb bob was because you needed that extra foot. So this was the worst type of tape is, is where, where it was incremented right here at the end uh, to a tenth, uh, to, to about an inch from the other end. So the actual process when you were chaining is you would, you would take a plumb bob and you would hold it over the tape with one hand like this and, and you, would, you would slide your thumb over the numbers kind of like this. Let's see if I can show you. And you would slide this bob up and down uh, on, on here like this, and you would use your thumb to move it uh, to, to read the hundreds. And so that was the process is you would, you would take your, your thumb and you would move it up and down. So the whole time it was a, it was a tough operation for, for most, uh, people to learn. Once you became good at it, it wasn't a problem, but you would brace your, your chain with your elbow against your body, your knee or your waist or your chest. And then you would use your thumb and you would move that along the chain with your, with your, your plumb bob. And your plumb bob, when it's waist high or even knee high, it has weight. 
So what happens is, is your plumb bob is kind of swinging like this. And so what you would do is you would lightly tap it. And, and the other person was just pulling on the chain and you'd be lightly tapping this on the ground or on the hub, usually not on the ground, but on, on a pipe or on a hub until you had that thing perfectly still. And so then once you were still, you would be yelling, good, good, good. And the other guy would be moving the, the string along the, uh, the, the, the tape. Good, 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 mark. Then he would read it out and he would call it out to you. Sometimes you would switch ends to get a check on that. But it's an operation to get a plumb bob to hold steady over a chain with one hand while you're pulling 20 pounds of pressure and that's without any wind. And so that was the process.